With a new and growing need for local file storage and data protection, I bought a two-base Synology DS220 Plus. Here are my thoughts. So with my exit from Chia Farming, growing files from making YouTube content, and a desire to keep local copies of various other files and media that I normally keep in the cloud, I jumped on an Amazon Prime Day deal and bought a Synology DS220 Plus NAS. Going into the NAS are two 12 terabyte Western Digital Easy Stores external drives that I shucked. With a little father-son electronics time, my son and I pulled the drives out of the externals that I had originally bought for Chia Farming, now for the NAS. Shucking's a pretty easy process overall. You snap loose some plastic tabs, open the enclosure, unscrew a few screws, and you're left with perfectly good three and a half inch hard drives. Sometimes you have to jump through hoops for shucked drives if you want them to work in a regular PC, but I've never had any trouble plugging such drives into a Synology or a NAS type box. So the DS220 Plus packs an Intel Celeron J4025 CPU. It's a two core, two gigahertz based chip. It comes with two gigabytes of DDR4 RAM with an option to expand up to six. There are two drive bays of course, and it is a dual LAN with link aggregation as well as two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports. All in all, it's very compact, light, and pretty quiet. I have the NAS installed downstairs on the top of my equipment rack in my storage room with the rest of most of my gear and hardwired to my 24 port ethernet switch. So form factor and noise really aren't a concern for me regardless. So setting up a Synology is a pretty straightforward process. Plug in the drives, put the face back on or lock them in, connect to power network and basically turn it on. Give it a minute to full boot and then go to find.synology.com in a browser on your local network to get to the device or just type in the IP address if you already know it. After a several minute update usually you'll be running the latest software and be ready to go. This is actually my fourth Synology so I'm pretty well versed with the operating system and its options. At a high level you need to configure a user account, build a disk volume, and then make some shared folders for your actual files. As I've not had a Synology in a while I felt like over time they've actually added features to the DSM software while also generally making it easier to use. Settings are logically grouped and fairly well explained. So to use your storage, you first need to make a pool, then you make a volume. On that, you can make your shared folders and store your content. Larger Synologies have very powerful hybrid RAID options and you definitely want to use the SHR on those. In this case though, I have two identical drives and I wanted redundancy in my files for full protection. So I just built my pool as a RAID 1. That means the drive contents are going to be exact copies of each other and maintained by the NAS. I have 12 terabyte of storage usable in total. Technically speaking, it's 10.5 terabytes after you do the bit byte calculations and you account for a little bit of overhead for the pool itself. So my plan for using the NAS is to make YouTube assets and rendering projects on my local PC and then once complete, I'll just copy all of those files to the NAS for cold storage and doubly protected by the RAID 1 array. My other main use case for the NAS is to keep local copies of my OneDrives. In my office PCs, I only keep 500 gigabyte solid state drives, so my cloud storage eclipsed that amount of space long ago. While the files on demand feature of Windows and OneDrive is actually really good, it's often easier to have access to our entire file set locally as well. Having that served from a NAS is ideal versus adding storage to and individually locating it in our multiple computers in the household. So Synology now offers a Cloud Sync app, which they've had for a little while, and it works with pretty much every major cloud service, including OneDrive. You can even add multiple accounts simultaneously and even from the same cloud provider. You simply install the Cloud Sync app, select the cloud service, log in, and then map it to a local folder on the NAS. There are some extra throughput and file delete behavior settings, but the NAS itself keeps everything up to date after an initial sync. It's really great, especially after having my multiple OneDrives all fully local for fast access through my home network. I'm sure I'll find some other uses for the NAS in time as well, although maybe not too many given the constrained storage and the limited number of drive bays. But in the end, the NAS should last me a long time for my intended use before filling up the 12 terabytes and needing to expand.
There are a few really good NAS brands out there, but I personally prefer Synology and recommend their products. As mentioned, I've had multiples of them in the past, originally a 5-bay, then an 8-bay, and a 12-bay for a while as well, and they all performed great. I've never lost data on a Synology. The one time I actually had a problem with a drive failing, the NAS properly allowed me to eject it, replace it, and rebuild the data array safely and with no loss whatsoever. For my needs here so far, the little DS220 Plus is perfect and performance is great. File copies exceed about 110 megabytes per second to and from my Windows machines, and I'm not feeling a need for any additional RAM. It's snappy and works perfect. Not bad for $245 out the door with the Prime Day sale. MSRP itself is only $299. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Also, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell for more content. Thanks.